Hi, I'm Debbie Kitterman. And I'm Brandi Kitterman, and we are here to equip you and challenge you to, to dare, dare to hear the voice of God. God. I'm really excited for today, how we're going to pick our topic. I think this is really I know. fun. I'm really excited about it, too. We wanted to, you know, we've been asking you to submit topics to us, right? Mm -hmm. And so you, the listeners, what topic do you want us to cover? What things should we talk about? And so we then we thought, well, how are we going to choose those things? And so we decided to uh, get a little bingo wheel. And we have this little bingo wheel with a little bingo balls <laughs> in them. <laughs> And apparently it just all flew out, so <laughs> if you can watch online, that's quite funny. Um, and we'll have to pick that one up later. That topic later. will be later. That topic will be later. <laughs> Sorry about whoever that is. So apparently we need to be careful with this. But we have this little bingo wheel, and we have taken the topics that, and questions yeah. that people have, and we've assigned them a bingo letter and a number and so that's how we're going to choose the topic so we yep. don't really know what we're going to talk about nope. so for those of you that are listening um it's going to be real and it's going to be raw and it's going to be as authentic we're as it can flying get flying by the seat of our pants we are so are we ready let's yep. see if we can do this without like losing another letter <laughs> Oh, we have two. Okay, well, that could be our next two I topics. I would do the first one. I would do the first one. Yeah. Okay, so that is G48 is what we're going to do. G48. Ooh, this is a good one. Ooh, this is a good one. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, you can read okay. it. Okay. So this is, what if I step out and get it wrong? I don't want to hurt instead of bringing healing. And that's from Teresa from Washington State. So I, I'm just going to go here. Okay. So one of the fundamental things about prophetic encouragement and mm -hmm. prophecy, yep. right, is that it will always encourage and exhort. Yep. Right? Yep. So there's really not a way as long as it makes people, as long as the word that you are saying is encouraging, it could be factually wrong um, or it could not apply to the person. But I don't think it will hurt as long as you're making sure that you're not convicting or... In judging. Judging. Judging is a good word. Judging. Um, because, or honestly, intending to cause shame, mm -hmm. right? Or... Um, Which I know seems really sad, right? You think, well, nobody would purposefully set out to do that. But, well, but people do. Like, people do. You know, kind of like if people... They know your situation and they know your stuff and they think you should be doing something. Sometimes they'll phrase it as, as I was praying for you, I felt like the Lord told me this. And then they give you opinion instead of, I know right. it sounds like, really people do that? Yes. Sadly, it is. There is misuse and abuse that comes around the prophetic gifting itself. And it's been happening for a long time. And some of it is blatant and some of it is very subtle. And I think what we need to understand is that our hearts need to be in the right place. Yep. Our hearts need to be in the right place. And so how 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 can we guarantee that we're not going to get wrong? We can't. We can't. We are human. There's no way. First of all, the most important thing is for us to be obedient, right? Mm -hmm. For us to step out. And and if we when we're stepping out, that's why I like to use certain phrasing, right? That's we talked in an episode that said don't say, thus saith the Lord, or God told me, because then all of a sudden you've put yourself in a position of authority where either if they listen to you and it's wrong, then it's coming back on you because right. that, or or that they might reject it because they're like, who do they think they are? So I always say to people, you know, I feel impressed, or can I share something that I, I, I felt um, prompted by the Lord or that... I feel could be him. And then I say, but could you take this? Could you pray about this too? Just because I want to leave it with you. You see, we have a responsibility. Um, if we're going to step out and we're going to prophetically encourage people mm -hmm. to one, have our hearts in the right place. We yes. need to be as pure vessels as we possibly can. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't do things wrong. That doesn't mean that we don't sin because there is no one perfect. No, not one. Right? There's only one perfect person and we all have stuff that we're dealing with. And we can we have to be careful too that we're not ministering or speaking from a place of hurt or woundedness. Right. And I've watched some extremely gifted prophetic individuals that minister from a place of brokenness or from what they can see. 
um, yeah. in somebody and they they speak from that and so we have to be careful that knowing that we all have different lenses that we see through but if we're coming to somebody and we're stepping out to being obedient like we talked on an episode that you brought up that our yeses are attached to someone else so if we're stepping out and we are being obedient to what God is asking us to do and we come with a heart of humility yeah humility is huge yeah. Right. If we come in and go, I'm all that and a bag of chips. Right. Then um, where did that phrase even come from? Okay, rabbit trail. We're not going to go there. <laughs> but but if we if we come in like that, then we're setting ourselves up to hurting people yeah. and also having some hurt ourselves because of people's reactions. So I I have a story about one time when this actually happened to me mm-hmm. when I was stepping out and and I I got it wrong or so we thought. Right. Okay. So okay. Actually, I'm ready. Okay. Do you have any? Be thinking because people might want to hear from you to see oh, if gosh. you have some too. Okay. Um, because really the heart of what you said at the beginning, the heart of prophetic encouragement is to encourage, to comfort, and to exhort the body of Christ, right? Now, not only am I a prophetic encourager, but I actually walk in the mantle of um, the prophetic and I actually have a prophetic call, which would be called... A prophet. a prophet. I was I gonna say. I don't like. So to, you're a prophet. <laughs> I don't like to call myself that, and and but people but people have called me that, and so it is what it is. And you can read about my story in the book about it. it doesn't matter what title I carry. I'm just being obedient to God. But before I even recognized that that's even what was in me, I was just operating on a ministry prayer team, and a gal had come for prayer for her daughter, and she had a picture of her daughter, and she wanted to bless her daughter that was in college. And as we're praying, I just kind of had this. Like, I guess what you would call a word of knowledge that God just kind of dropped in my heart. And I felt like she was in communications. Like, that's what she was studying in college. And the only way to know that is to step out. Right. Which can be a really scary thing. It is. You know? And so I stepped out and I just said, oh, so I just kind of, I heard this word communication. I really feel like your daughter is um, called to be in the communication field. And is she studying um, at school for this? And she's like no Mm. she's not studying communications at all and I'm like oh okay well I guess I missed it and it was one of those opportunities where I stepped out right I got it wrong but it also didn't necessarily hurt right right but but it was kind of like chalked it up to well Debbie missed that one and she actually we joked about it later right she was like I think you totally missed that one but I'm gonna still give the tape so at that time this is dating me right we used to record them on tapes now we have people bring their cell phones when I do that and then (laughs) then they send them to each other you know with the voice memos and then we use digital recorders before everybody started carrying cell phones but this was an actual cassette tape yeah. That we did. And she had mailed it to her daughter off at college and she had listened to it. And then it was like two, two and a half years later when she came back to me and she said, Debbie, I have to tell you something. And I'm thinking, okay. I mean, I hadn't ministered to her recently. And so I didn't know what she wanted to share with me at that time. And so I talked with her and she said, my daughter found that tape. Do you remember that tape that we did about two and a half years ago when she was struggling with some stuff and needing to make some choices and, you know, just life at school, being away from home and in college was just rough on her. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I I remember that. I remember praying for her and um, stuff. And she's like, well, you remember we thought you got it wrong? And I said, I didn't really remember it because it had been a couple years ago. And, and, And I minister prophetically a lot to a lot of people. But then she said, well, you said that you thought that she was in the communication field and she wasn't at the time. And I said, oh, yes, now I remember. I remember that whole conversation. She said, well, my daughter was cleaning up her room and she found your tape and she put it in and she listened to it. Now, mind you, this was two, two and a half years before this moment when she's talking to me. And so I was kind of really intrigued, like, oh, well, what else did I say on that tape? And she said that as she was listening to it, and I talked about this piece about communication, she said her daughter had just switched majors after being in college for two and two and a half years, getting all the core stuff out of the way, right? Mm -hmm. She needed to make a decision, and she was going along the direction in one way, but she had just kind of made the decision to switch majors to 
Communications. Huh? Two communications. Yep. And she kind of was kind of torn up, like, was this the right decision? And then she comes across my tape, which she had forgot all about, because isn't it isn't that what we oh, do? Yeah. Like we we want oh, these yeah. things and people speak these things. So this is just a side note. When God speaks or other people speak to you and you think it is the Lord, you need to write those mm-hmm. things down so you can go back and reference those yeah, things. Absolutely. And if you've read um the foreword that Wayne Cadero did in the book, he talks about Abraham Lincoln and how Abraham Lincoln Kate kept words of encouragement and things like that in his wallet. Like if you go, you will see the things that he carried in his wallet, which was newspaper articles and other things that were encouraging him. Kind of like what David did to encourage himself in the Lord, right? Was reminding himself of the things the Lord said. So it's really important to write these things down. But she did it. She came across the tape. She found a cassette player. She listened to it, and it was confirmation for her. It encouraged her because she was like, did I make this? Did I waste all these two years of going in this one direction and taking courses? Can I do this? And it was encouraging to her that God knew where she was at and where she was going to be two, two and a half years later when she made this decision, and it was confirmation that she was going in the right direction. Yeah. That's really great. And I think... I think when stepping out to give a prophetic word or an encouraging word, um, just make sure, like, if it sounds mean, just don't say it. Yeah. You know the old saying, like, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all? This definitely applies here. It definitely applies. Uh, Especially if somebody that you know is hurting is coming to you asking for a word. And, you know, if you feel like the Lord is giving you something that's a little challenging or can be taken as mean... Just ask him for another way to say it. Say, God, is there a nice way to say this? I need confirmation that this is you because I do not want to say this and hurt them. Yeah. And a lot of times when God will give you something for that, it's out of a basis of a relationship. But the other thing, too, is that sometimes God gives us information for us to pray, not giving Mm -hmm. us information so that we can speak it to the other person. Like he may give us information about somebody that may be harsh or maybe corrective in nature, like they're in sin and this is what their sin is. Well, you know, it's not necessarily our place. Our place is to really come in the opposite spirit. I remember Graham Cook used to say that that was a walnut word, right? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to to see when somebody's having a bad day, right? But it takes the person hearing from God to find out what is that the root of what the problem is. And so when there's something, like when somebody's struggling with depression or dealing with suicide, like what's the opposite spirit of that? The opposite spirit is that they need, they want to be loved. They need to feel loved and that they belong. And so you you ask God, how do you phrase this? Because if you say to somebody, well, you're suicidal, that's not going to be great. I mean, I actually, the Lord had given me a word of knowledge about a young girl and I can't remember if I've shared this yet on the, um, on the podcast, but she came up to me for prayer after I had been done speaking and the Lord showed me that she was suicidal. And I was like, great, but I can't say that. You can't say that to somebody. Right. Cause like, Oh great. God knows what I'm going to do. God knows what I'm planning to do. Right. No, that's not helpful. So I was like, okay, God, so this is this is information. Yeah. This is information yeah. so I know where they're at. I know what kind of frame of reference, state of mind that they're at. And I need to be very careful because this young woman is very fragile. So then I asked God for a like a picture or a word or something that I could speak to her that wouldn't bless her, right? And he gave me a picture of a puzzle that was all complete but one piece. And I don't know about you, but when I do puzzles and I cannot find that one piece, that one piece that I know is supposed to go there, it's not finished. And it just drives me yeah. crazy. Yep. So I knew what God was talking about, that she was that piece of the puzzle, that if she was missing, the puzzle wouldn't be complete. And that she was an integral part to other people's lives. Because when you put the pieces together to a puzzle, they all go together to create this beautiful picture, this beautiful image. And if pieces are missing, the picture's not complete. And so I was able to minister to her, not by telling her that she was suicidal, but telling her that she was loved and belonged yep. and important. And so that's the thing that we need to know that when we're stepping out too, is is as if information Or is this something that needs to be shared? And if it is information, then we pray about it. And don't feel the need, like, I have to rush to give this to the person. Right. Mm Because God, if God's given you something, he'll give you time to pray over it if if it needs to be delivered sometimes. And I guess my, to Teresa here in Washington that that, that asked this question, what if I step out and I get it wrong? I don't want to hurt instead of bringing healing. I guess to wrap this up, it would be that we need to have our hearts in the right place. 
we need to um, ask God to help us operate with a heart of humility and love towards people, not out of condemnation, judgment, yeah. or with the purpose of trying to set somebody straight and telling them the what should be. Right. And that we need to really release the heart of the Father towards somebody, which is love. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything else that you want to add to that for um, Teresa? Yeah, I mean, for in terms of stepping out and getting it wrong, uh, it's okay. Yeah, we're you know, going to get, get wrong. We're all human here, and we're learning. And, you know, it goes back to knowing my father's voice, right? Yeah. Um, and that takes practice. Yeah. Right? So... Anybody can get it wrong, even if you've heard it a thousand times. Like, yeah. I don't know how many times, you know, I think I hear somebody calling me, right? And nobody's calling me. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of like that. It's it's okay. Don't don't beat yourself up, right? And maybe, like uh, my mom's story, it wasn't right in that time. Maybe you got it wrong at that time. But who knows a couple years down the road. Yeah. And and we hold them we hold them very if I would have said no, I didn't get it wrong, you just you just don't know it yet. I mean, that wasn't my place. My place was to share what I felt like God had put on my heart and then release God to do what needed to to um, he needed to do. I always tell people, if it doesn't resonate with you, in fact I have a chapter about judging the prophetic words and judging prophecy and yeah. judging the gift of encouragement was so important, right? Mm -hmm. That if it doesn't resonate with you, it's okay. Just kind of set it to the side and then God will remind you if it's for you when the, when time, the time is time. right. Mm -hmm. And so we need to, we need to not take ourselves so seriously and think that we have, that we're the answer. I mean, pride is huge. Like so that's why we need to operate in humility and we need to, we need to, um, try to get ourselves to a place of healing the best that we can to yeah. be able to minister to people so that we can step out. Yeah. So I think my last things are, if it sounds mean, don't say it. Yeah. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Um, and if you really, really feel like this is what the Lord is telling you to say, just ask for a confirmation or a clarification or yeah. maybe even another way to say it. Um, but, you know, he, he is God and he does know best. So he does. He does. Well, thank you for listening to Dare to Hear the podcast today, where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. I'm Debbie Kitterman. And I am Brandi Kitterman. If you guys are watching on YouTube, go ahead and click subscribe, give us a thumbs yes. up, and leave a comment for us. If you're listening on anywhere else where podcasts are found, including Apple Podcasts, please uh, subscribe, download, and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. Yep. Um, and a few quick things before we go. My mom wrote a book. It is called The Gift of Prophetic Encouragement. This one right here. Um, so it is available, I think, in most retailers. Um, yeah. But you can get a signed copy yeah. on DebbieKitterman.com. Yep. Go the to the shop. store. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. And if you, like Teresa... Uh, have a question that you are wanting us a topic or question that you want us to cover if you will email us at info at dare the number two here.com we will add you to um, our list and assign you a bingo number and hey. then be <laughs> listening for the shout out of when we shout out your name so Teresa thank you for your question today mm -hmm. it was really good we hope that it blesses the rest of you and until next time dare to hear the voice of God Tell your friends. Yeah.